Hello and welcome to the show. Now the Mazda 787B is indeed a very iconic race car, owing largely to its incredible engine. After all, this is the only vehicle to have won Le Mans that hasn't used the sort of more standard reciprocating engine design, and then it got immediately banned after winning. The rotary engine is incredible, it makes a phenomenal noise and quite a lot of power. Thanks to Forza 6, you can take the racing engine from this car and put it into other vehicles. You can also remove the restrictors. The 787B has 690 horsepower, but without the restrictors, you can get it up to almost 800. Now, inside a prototype race car, that is all very well and good. There are giant racing tires, a big wing at the back, and everything is all very controlled. Even having said that, this engine's power delivery is ferocious. There is nothing else quite as ferocious when it comes to uh, all of the power trying to escape. Yeah, even the more powerful engines that I have used in the game, the quad rotor is incredible. And you can put this engine into quite a few other vehicles. So. What would happen if we stick an 800 horsepower quad rotor engine into some Mazda RX-3s and left everything else stock? The only things that we have changed the diff, because otherwise we just get a one tire fire, and the gearbox, because otherwise you'll be buzzing in the limiters. So, brakes, tires, suspension, etc., all completely standard in these vehicles with 800 very noisy horsepowers trying to escape out of the rear, and of course, we were going to have to go racing. Now, one car may have escaped turn one at Laguna Seca. Amazingly, everybody else made it through. They're trying to fit three wide. These are not easy cars to drive. You can see them wobbling about on the suspension. The brakes are, well, horrendous. The green gear up ahead gets a tiny bit of a slide, just clips the back of the car ahead. Trying to keep these things going in a straight line is incredibly difficult. The pink car we're following had a wheel on the sand. That could end incredibly badly out there. Does a great job of keeping the car on the road. We'll lose a spot, but uh, <laughs> Absolutely crazy. Everyone's trying to go too wide. Blue car will sneak up the inside. There's not quite the grip to get through there. Everyone is trying to learn what their cars are capable on this opening lap. Yeah, these are horrendously, horrendously difficult to control cars as we now will come up plummeting down the corkscrew. I found out the hard way. I couldn't get my car stopped into the corkscrew and I get dumped all the way down the order. But amazingly, it was actually... Yeah, there were the, the odd outbreaking incident from people, but amazingly a relatively clean opening lap. And despite the difficulties of these vehicles, an awful lot of side-by-side -side action as we now head up towards the final corner, trying to fit uh, far too many cars into a small area. And this racing would continue as we uh, progress through the Laguna race. The uh, black car here is, uh, you can see how much these move about through the corners. I've raced, you know, many, many vehicles on this game and nothing quite moves about as much as, uh, as these vehicles do. They, there's just, there's something constantly going on with them. They're constantly either bouncing around on the suspension or is he trying to put power down coming out of a corner they're wanting to wiggle all over the road. You're trying to put power down simply going in a straight line. You see the red car bursts into wheel spin and gets a little bit of a, a knock on the side of the vehicle he's racing. This crest is terrifying with these cars. If you're properly going for it and you haven't got people around, a lot of cars were getting airtime across there and then you'd still have to try and fight and get it slowed down for this first corner. The black and white car here, having made the most of his opportunities, grabbed a couple of spots and then struggled to get the car stopped and turned for the next corner. That would allow the red RX3 up the inside. There's still a gap. Blue car is very keen on having a go at getting past as well. Tries his luck. Can't quite get the manoeuvre done there though. Perhaps the most notable thing with these trying to get the braking right was so difficult. In some respects harder than dealing with the crazy amounts of power. You know, you could be careful with the throttle trying to put the power down, but if trying to get these cars stopped from such high speeds with their standard brakes and standard suspension and so on was... Uh, yeah, proving to be on the rather interesting side. It made overtaking perhaps a little bit easier 
because there was such large braking zones with these cars that you could, uh, yeah, try and be that little bit, little bit braver, although things could go wrong very, very quickly. Whenever there was a long straight, it was very, very important to get a good run onto it. The black car gets a huge slide across the crowd. I have no idea how he managed to save that. I thought it was going to be a goner through there, but uh, he did get it stopped. Goes for a cutback as well on the uh, yellow car just about makes that uh, maneuver stick. The yellow car wants to go around the outside but can't quite get the car stopped. And again, once you've got that wheel on the sand, it's very, very hard. Uh, th with a good, you know, with a good handling, normal racing vehicle, you've got a wheel on the sand, can be very difficult to get it slowed and turned and so on. At the front, there was, uh, it was a really, really lonely race for the purple car until the very final, the very final lap. Second place was gradually catching and he would challenge him for the lead as we come up towards the corkscrew going around the outside at the top of the corkscrew is uh, really really not a particularly good idea it just can't get the car stopped can't get the car turned they end up having to jump his way down the course the purple car had all manner of issues on the exit they kind of evened themselves out with their uh, with their time loss as we run through the next turn the blue car gets himself to the inside but in doing so takes a little bit too shallow a line just can't get the power down on the way out the purple car would hug the inside for the final turn once more forcing the blue vehicle to try the long way round. <laughs> see the wheel spin pouring off the back of the blue car as he tries to put the power down but it isn't quite going to be enough purple car would take victory in the end of the driver tires now had to frantically try and keep control of the vehicles and yeah they were they were never likely to i was in an incredible battle this was down for i think about fourth fifth place here as uh, we were coming towards the final lap. So while the leaders were having their own fun, this was uh, our fight further back. I was focusing, trying to get a good run out of the final turn. And if you could, you know, get the get the power down well, you could make some decent ground. And sure enough, I do get the pass done. You may be wondering why, or did some people try and be cheeky and run various assists like traction control, uh, because that would give you an advantage. It really doesn't. The traction control is so busy trying to stop you from putting power down, you just don't put any down anyway. So you are much quicker, but you do have to be aware that, uh, yeah, it is very, very easy to spin the wheels up, as I found, coming out of the first corner. Got myself a little bit sideways. That allowed the red vehicle to come back at me. And this racing was incredible. We were having huge fun racing these cars, despite the fact they should be completely and utterly unsuitable. As I said, 800 horsepower. These cars are still C-class vehicles. With, with this much power, they will do 220 plus miles an hour on a, on a long straight. I've had one before that will do it. It's terrifying, but they are capable of that kind of speed as uh, I'm still hounding the red car, looking for a way past. There's going to be no room through here, though that's a difficult corner to get past with, well, your normal excellent handling cars, let alone with vehicles like these. I've learnt my lesson trying to break late into the corkscrew on the opening lap. Couldn't do anything this time around as we fly down the corkscrew. I only had really one good overtaking opportunity left. I was quick through these corners, but it's very difficult to get a pass done. The red car does slide out wide, but he's going to keep it alongside. He will be on the inside for the next turn. I'm not too fussed about that. He can take that tighter line. He'll run wide on the exit, but uh, he's now in a little bit unfortunate position. He's got a very good line for defending into the final corner. Again, I'm happy to let him dive deeply under brakes. I would get my car for the cutback and get that better drive down the start finish straight to take the position of the red car struggling trying to put more and more power down in the end can't do it it was a phenomenal race and we're talking about such uncontrollable vehicles here further back as well there was, like, all of the excitement happened on the final lap of uh, of this race this was much further back well outside the uh, top 10 these two were fighting for position very similar thing white car ran very very wide blue vehicle having a look couldn't quite get it done. Blue car gets a really big slide uh, in the end, which it doesn't help with uh, putting the power down. Again, the white car struggling to get stopped into the final corner, and that makes you sluggish over the turn. Despite the near coming together, it's all about who can put that power down better, and the blue car just gets it by uh, fractions of a second there. Fantastic finish for uh, these guys as well. Yeah, these cars are absolutely ridiculous and as per normal with fail race videos the most stupidest of vehicles were turning out to have some of the well greatest racing now having seen that there were quite a lot of problems with well trying to get this cars slowed down what better challenge than go to the yas marina north circuit 
A very, very long straight followed by an incredibly tight hairpin. Yeah, and that was always likely to be a tough challenge. And not only, you know, that one section, we've got a very fast opening couple of corners that these cars, well, really don't have a huge amount of grip through. You can see <laughs> almost every single one of them is sliding through this opening part of the lap. It is, uh, yeah, not so easy, especially on cold tyres. And when you're not quite sure what the car's going to be capable of at uh, a particular circuit, yeah, a, a very... You had to learn quick. You had to learn very quick with these cars. As we come around the hairpin for the first time, the pink car here trying to get to the inside. Not quite uh, not quite able to. Of course, the exit of the hairpin was also very, very critical because these cars are so powerful and they can be so fast. If you get a bad run onto the straight, it really, really costs you. Equally, you can't do too much in the way of steering movement down the straight. You saw a few of the cars weaving across the track. It's not intentional. They're trying to put the power down and the car will break sideways incredibly easily. The braking zone, well, I think there was one car that uh, missed the brakes into the uh, incredibly tight hairpin, which is kind of to be incredible. It was only one car that uh, had issues through that section of the <laughs> lot of cars struggling with the final corner because no one's quite sure what the cars are going to be able to uh, to do. You know, you go, you err on the side of caution, certainly, with a vehicle like this, but that doesn't necessarily mean you've erred quite enough. Again, turn one, a few more cars trying to be the last of the late breakers, and, and no one quite realised just how early you would have to break. So some cars took, took a visit to uh, a couple of the runoff areas. Having said that, once again, the racing was proving to be really really rather close with these utterly ludicrous cars as we now head down the uh, long back straight if you could get the brakes spot on down here of course you could make up huge gains if you could get it perfect but you really did have to get it perfect as the uh, red car just can't quite get stopped there's a lot of great opportunity for the uh, pink vehicle to get alongside it's quite going to go around the outside of the final corner a wise maneuver cut back to the inside get that good run down towards the start finish line and he would move up into third place they've got to make sure though you get it slowed down for the first turn and kind of the difference between making a corner absolutely spot on and you know carrying really good speed or as good a speed as you're going to with these cars and getting things horrendously wrong was so minute with these cars as this grey vehicle would learn coming out of the hairpin just went to go on the power that little bit too soon just a fraction tiny bit too soon or just a tiny bit too much throttle and loses three places that is how important getting out onto this straight rolls especially with so many cars close around you you have to get everything absolutely right although again you could make it up into the next corner as the three cars up ahead Busy trying to outbreak one another or break outbreak themselves completely and <laughs> end up in trouble. I mean, you could recover because there were plenty of runoff areas. Unfortunately, all of the grey car's hard work would be undone with a big spin across the uh, final corner. Amazingly, we didn't actually see too many spins. Uh, there was that spin uh, in this race, and later on I would have a spin as well at that final corner. But they were the only real spins that, uh, that we saw, which considering the power and... You know, a lot of them were curb assisted, you know, bouncing across the curbs at the best of time can cause cars issues in Forza 6. <laughs> we're talking silly, silly vehicles here, tiny tyres and stupendous power that's all trying to escape immediately. I only saw a couple of cars spin and it was only at uh, Yaz Marina. So, yeah, everyone was doing a great job of keeping these vehicles under control and, you know, racing closely with one another again we come to the hairpin the black car trying to get that good run but just gets too much wheel spin if you go for that cutback and you get it right you can absolutely fly down the straight but getting too much wheel spin on the way out of the hairpin not a good idea you can see the size of the gap that it uh, opens out at the front and it was the same two cars battling for the lead as they <laughs> come around the hairpin once more uh, I think they started relatively high up, managed to get clear of everybody and then could start their own little private battle. Certainly trying to get through the traffic on lap one, if you were one of the slightly quicker cars, you could uh, you could uh, make some ground and if you get into clean air, it was very, very useful. You weren't having to constantly worry about fighting, you know, attacking or defending against another car. The purple vehicle goes for the bravery into the hairpin, does get it stopped in time without running too wide. However, 
isn't it quite soon enough. A simple cutback from the blue vehicle would be all that he needed to regain the lead again, though the purple car is going on the offensive down towards the first corner. This first turn is not the nicest of overtaking spots at the best of times, and wisely, the purple car thinks better of it. It's a relatively quick corner, and it's a relatively small braking zone, although, you know, we are talking in relation to the vehicle itself. Yeah, a little bit of a, a dodgy, a dodgy overtaking zone. And if you do try to go, or if, you know, you think about one of these half chances, you can often end up then having to back off, and again, you can see the size of the gap that uh, can be pulled in these cars with just one little error and then equally made up again as the blue car outbreaks himself slightly into the chicane. While the leaders were having a good two-way battle, further back there was a four-way battle going on for position. Every so often a car would break free of one of these groups and then run off up the road and then catch up to a group ahead and then they'd start fighting. It's kind of an interesting, <laughs> an interesting way that uh, the races go. There were kind of relatively large gaps between groups because when you were fighting with these cars you just lost heaps and heaps of time once more all about who can get the braking right into these corners the blue car almost got himself in trouble unfortunately for the poor orange vehicle here was just sort of stuck in the middle of the road and the orange car didn't quite have anywhere to go to make the most of that opportunity at the front as we came on to the final lap still there was the same battle going on it was a great race up here for the victory once more into the braking zone at the hairpin. The purple car is closing and closing, but can't quite do anything about getting past the leader. Just wasn't close enough to have a dive into that last corner in the final turn. Well, you're never really likely. You can see how hard they're pushing both of them, uh, wiggling across the road. Uh, yeah, it, when you're that far back, you're never quite going to be able to uh, do too much into that into that hairpin. Although the driver does <laughs> swap positions. Uh, after the finish. Good old driver Tars continuing the battles. Once more, the final lap was incredible throughout the field, which is always always nice to see when there's lots of close finishes throughout the order. This was a little further back, I think. This was, again, for around, uh, around fourth, fifth place. The green car was struggling. Just got some wheel spin. And, you know, we're doing about 175-ish miles an hour when we're jumping on the brakes here. This is it a C-Class car? 175 miles an hour. The black vehicle tried up the inside. Both of them were braking so late, trying to beat one another. Neither of them could get stopped, particularly while the car behind them missed the braking zone even greater as they round the final turn again. Both cars sliding the black vehicle, though managing to get that power down a little bit better and would get the position for a, yeah, another very, very exciting finish. As if Yasmarina hadn't been tough enough. Well, now is to really test the uh, throttle control as we headed to the Silverstone International Circuit in the pouring rain. There is a lot of wheel spin in these cars from standard, or in standard conditions, let alone when we've got to worry about the rain. Equally, the car that started on the right-hand side of the grid actually starts in a puddle, which is why our side of the grid did not get off to, uh, off to a very, very good start, because there's a long puddle running along that section. Really bloody doesn't help trying to get these cars going. Having said that, you know, despite the conditions, it was a remarkably clean start. There was a little bit of trading paint here and there through the field, but on the whole, everyone got through very, very cleanly. Now, again, you're never quite sure what you're going to have with uh, these kind of cars, with this kind of racing, but uh, it was rem working remarkably well. There's a long train of cars heading down the extra. Anytime there's a puddle, there's cars breaking sideways. The green car on the inside got on the grass. It's never a good place to be. Does manage to get the vehicle back under control again, though. I was, quite, I was expecting to see that one go soaring off, but he did a great job of getting it all back on track. I am once more looking at the back of a red RX3, trying to find a way past. That RX3 clips a puddle, tips the car sideways, gives me an opportunity around the outside of the first part. We'll put you on the inside for the final turn. I will happily go for that one. And the red car gets a little bit compromised, and he's going to get overtaken by another car following me through. Everyone is sliding through this final turn, just trying to find some some grip somewhere out there on the track. The green vehicle gets stuck in the puddle on the inside, not where you want to be. I outbreak myself ever so slightly, very nearly end up in the back of the black car. <laughs> now three wide through this next corner, but once more, we all just about get away with it. And this was at the front. Again, for the lead, we had a three-car battle going and very quickly became a four-car battle 
heading on towards this back straight once more. You know, everyone trying to get that power down to make the most of these long straights. And if you could, you would have a big advantage. As I said with the Yas Marine one, it's slightly less kind of prevalent here at Silverstone when you don't have such a slow corner followed by such a long straight. But still, if you could get that power down out of a corner better and you could avoid the puddles, and that was a big thing, you could make up for some positions. This black car would find himself into the lead after the leader, the leader tried to hold it around the outside, just ran out of grip on the outside of the turn. Then the black car can't get it slowed down in the braking zone. So he's going to find himself under threat, but then trying to go around the outside of this final turn is not the easiest of things to do. The purple car, though, does have enough speed to make it stick. The vehicle we were following had to just lift ever so slightly around the final corner, make sure it doesn't end up in the door of the leader. That causes the vehicle behind to have to check up. They do all get away with it, but, uh, yeah, poor blue car just gets a little bit boxed in, not quite having anywhere to go at that stage of the race. And despite this being by far the trickiest of conditions you could really drive these cars in, it was the wet race that would be the closest out of all of them. And the first two had gone really, really well, and this one was going even better. It turns out the sillier conditions you have us racing, the better the racing gets, and I'm not quite sure how any of that makes sense. However, it was proving to be, yet again, huge fun. These puddles on the midway through corners were not particularly fun. They were something that you really had to uh, watch out for. Oh, I forgot there's another car. <laughs> another car went around, uh, ran a little bit wide. I think it was trying to uh, put the power down too soon. Yeah, it was quite easy if you weren't careful to uh, get the vehicles spinning uh, spinning around. Once more, two cars going side by side, coming on to this back straight. The grey car going a very long way around the outside. I think there's a small bit of contact. Often there's not a huge amount you can do. If your car starts breaking sideways, uh, you can <laughs> fight it all you like, but in some ways, it's, sometimes it's just going to go in a direction. You see the grey car really struggling to uh, get it back across track. Now, he doesn't want to come across into the path of the yellow vehicle, but uh, you know sometimes the, the car just sort of does whatever it wants. Uh, the yellow vehicle does briefly get the position, although a good cutback from the grey car would uh, regain him his position. I was once more in a giant battle for position, trying to carry as much speed as I could through that first corner. I was also wanting to try and stay as far to the left of that puddle. You didn't want to go in any puddles with these cars. You wanted to avoid puddles as best you could. You see here, that's not really where you want to be. I was frantically trying to keep the car as far away from that one as I could. Whenever you're in a puddle, you're always likely to uh, get into some trouble. I actually ran across a curb, bounced my car out wide. I've got to take a really tight line coming on towards the straight, which is less than ideal. I can't quite get the power down as well. I thought I was going to be uh, highly under threat from the purple vehicle, and sure enough, as we run down towards the next corner, he would slide his way past. <laughs> just massive slides going on. And this is just trying to keep these cars under control, just trying to keep them going in a straight line. That is the sort of thing that the cars want to do. The green vehicle up ahead had uh, outbraked himself into that turn, so I would lose a position, but then gain a different one. But there we go. At the front, and everything was getting now really rather crowded. It was back to a full-on four-way battle for the lead, as the black car would uh, find himself back up in first, again catching the puddle, gets a big sideways moment, and now he's under threat from the blue vehicle. And all of this fighting, a little bit of a laggy, but unfortunately there was a little bit of uh, laggy collisions going on uh, in this one. All of this fighting, and you know, it massively slows these leaders down, trying to get these cars, you know, too wide through a corner means both of you have got to be going slower and the car behind can't go anywhere because you're not going to fit three cars through many of these turns so everybody just ends up driving slower the blue car went for an overtake ends up out wide now we're trying to fit three cars wide through a corner that's not really uh, not really good for three cars they are wisely back out of that we're going to have a little bit of uh, a laggy shunt a little laggy pinball effect going on and then you know a third of a lap the uh, pink car has now just joined this group. It really doesn't take much with these cars for everyone to suddenly bunch up. Once more, we're going two, three wide as we come flying down this straight. However, the leaders have been pushing each other too hard. All three of them, try, again, trying to be the last of the late breakers, all three of them had ended up in the sand trap. None of them connected with each other, they just all couldn't get stopped, which meant the uh, epic five-way battle for the lead would uh, be toned down ever so slightly. It would be uh, now back to two cars fighting for the victory. Never likely to last in these sort of uh, conditions. 
While the leaders had uh, fallen apart a little bit, we were back to squabbling massively for places. I was catching a puddle and going sideways. It was never a particularly fun experience. Yellow car was getting involved behind us. They were again going too wide. Yellow car finds a puddle on that inside. You really couldn't run down the inside into turn one. The puddles down there were just too bad. They're just too likely to throw the car sideways. Then you lose masses of time. It was just simply not worth the risk. I was looking for a way past at turn sort of two and three. This is probably one of your better spots to go for an for an overtake, not really into the into the first corner. Uh, I was sort of looking around, but uh, was never likely to quite work at uh, that section of track a little bit too far back. Again, you know, we were being helped. The two cars ahead fighting for position allowed me, the car behind, to stay right there. The vehicles further back uh, were catching as well. Now we go three wide three wides down the straight. It was very much a case of hope you've picked the right lane to be in to avoid the puddles and not to get ginormous slides. And I had in this instant. I got a good run off of the uh, corner and was able to get my car to the inside. Hug the inside line uh, make it very difficult for anyone to try and go the long way around. The green car was sticking it around the outside, despite having been side by side with me though. The green vehicle would lose out to the uh, the purple car. The purple car actually really struggled. I think got a big slide coming down the straight and <laughs> squabbling behind me, trying to go three wide into a corner where it's a bit of a pain going too wide. But that's just the things that we were trying to get away with with these ridiculous cars and while yeah some paint was swapped at times and some cars got a little bit squeezed there wasn't any major accidents which uh, I think was yeah incredible it's a fantastic driving from everyone keeping these vehicles uh, on the majority of time anyway under control the leaders as they came onto their final lap pink was still hounding still looking for a way past this final corner is a little bit of an awkward one. You can, if you can stick it around the outside here, you'll be on the inside for the very final turn. It's worth a try, but the pink car gets a big slide at the wrong moment, just can't quite carry that momentum. Is uh, not far enough alongside to put his nose uh, up the inside. And the purple car would go on to uh, take victory once more in a really rather fantastic race. These were a lot of fun. I, like when I, when I set out to do this challenge, you know, I knew the cars were going to be crazy. I was hoping we were going to have, you know, some good racing. I wasn't quite expecting to have as much incredibly close racing, you know, kind of throughout the field as well. You know, a few cars did struggle a little bit more at different tracks and so on, and it did take a little bit to kind of get acclimatized to driving these, these sort of vehicles. But yeah, it was incredible. Incredible the amount of close racing with such stupendously ridiculous cars you know, 800 horsepower or near enough 800 horsepower in a pretty much standard rx3 is not not quite what the car was was designed to deal with but uh quite an interesting and very exciting and incredibly noisy challenge and yeah a lot of fun an awful lot of fun however that is uh, going to be it for this video guys thank you very much for watching and until next time, uh, goodbye.